Hello, this is um, a tutorial about how to take your in the groove hard drive and expand the custom songs and custom content partitions so that you can put more stuff on it. Yeah, so um, I'm kind of skipping a few steps here, but I figure they're pretty easy. I'm not going to show everything, but um, right now I am booted up into Linux Mint 14. Um, any, most Linux distributions will work fine for this, but, um, I use Linux Mint 14 because it's installed on my desktop, um, in order to, uh, boot up into a Linux distribution, all you need is a USB drive and, um, or a disk, and you can run it live and connect any kind of external storage to your computer, and, um, for that reason, this method will work even if you don't have Linux installed on your computer, but you just have a flash drive. So I already have my um, In the Groove hard drive plugged into my computer. Um, I already am booted up in Linux Mint. Um, the way that I'm connecting my hard drive to a computer is this um, cables to go hard drive to USB converter. Um, it works for SATA and IDE hard drives, um, you want to make sure that you get an IDE, like an IDE to USB or like a universal hard drive to USB um, adapter because otherwise you might have issues. But this one I used on, I got from Amazon for like $15 cables to go. For some reason this is kind of blurry, I don't know why, but um, yeah, so I have it plugged into uh, some random thing. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> some random uh, outlet, and I have it plugged into my computer. So it's already showing all the partitions on my desktop here. So um, you know that your drive has been connected if you can see that all this stuff has popped up. Oh, look, it's focusing now. That's great. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I have a drive that has a 33 gigabyte volume, a 4 gigabyte volume, and a 132 megabyte volume. And it looks like it has two 33 megabyte volumes, but it's actually both, they're both the same. And that's probably what's going to be the case for you as well. So I'm just going to kind of stay back here. I'm just opening my biggest volumes. I've already expanded my hard drive. Aha. Ah, so sorry. The screen was blurry. So I have a 33 megabyte and a 33 gigabyte. So you have four different partitions. Um, I forget about what I said. You have two different partitions. <laughs> and um, you're probably going to have similar sizes to me. You're going to have a 33, you're going to have a 132, and you're going to have a 4 gig. And my 33 gigabyte should be replaced with your around 9 gigabyte volume. No, maybe even 5. It depends. But um, the largest volume that appears on your computer is going to be your custom songs directory. And this is for people who have already hacked their machine to expand their drive so yeah so as you can see this is the custom songs folder and all the other important files for ITG um, here are my songs here's my data um, another thing that you can use this hard drive thing for is um, you can really quickly take songs on and off um, your computer on and off the hard drive and put it on your computer and vice versa which is really convenient if you don't want to wait for songs to copy over a network connection, which is what I usually do over SSH, or you don't want to have to wait for your machine to boot up into Slacks and use that and have to do a couple of different copies. Um, this method will probably re reduce the time of copying songs by four times, so you can expect to do this much faster. But anyway, as you can see, I already have um, a, a, an expanded volume. And this is the original ITG hard drive, but, um, so if we go down here to your menu, and then we can type in the search bar or find an application called Gparted. So I know in all Linuxes you have a terminal, so, um, the application I use is Gparted. 
This is um, a partition manager that will allow you to do various edits and change the um, file system types on a hard drive and like rewrite partition tables and such. So if you just enter that, um, you'll probably get something saying, this program is not installed, you can install it by typing sudo apt get install gparted. So if you are running a Debian based distribution, so Ubuntu, Alubuntu, Xubuntu, Linux Mint, and various others, then you will be able to use this command in order to install it. If you're running a different kind of distribution, you might have to do yum install gparted, um, but this app, this utility is generally available on all Linux operating systems, so... Okay, so we are going to install this. Um, you'll probably, if you're installing Ubuntu or Linux Mint or some distro from scratch and you can't run gparted right away, then you have to run sudo um, apt-get install and... This is how you install utilities from um, a bash terminal, like for any application or if you need any kind of dependency. So yeah, so G parted. And you'll be prompted to enter your password. So I'm gonna put my phone down so I can enter my password quickly. Yeah. And then as you can see, it's installing. It's saying it's unpat, it's doing stuff and it should just you should just get it installed. Um, if you're running a, on a live CD, make sure that you have an internet connection. Um, as long as you have an internet connection, you should be able to install the software and run it even though it's not installed. The operating system itself is not installed on a hard disk. So this should work. I, it's worked for me in the past. Um, if you just stick to Linux Mint, I know it will work. So uh, once it's installed, you can just run it by typing the name of the program again in the terminal. Oh, and then it says root privileges are required for running gparted. Okay, so in order to have root privileges, you need to use sudo. So you just type sudo. Sudo stands for super user do. So basically you're saying, yo, I am the admin. Let me do this stuff. So you just type sudo gparted. I mean, since modifying a hard disk is something you can like break and mess up for everyone, like if you have a share, like a hard drive where people share files, then I mean, obviously it's important for you to have to be verified, you know, verified admin being allowed to edit important computer storage areas. So, and then uh, the program should come up like this. Um, it's going to load, you're going to wait a few moments, um, and then you should see a ton of hard disks. You should see some stuff going on. Um, I'm not sure, depending on what size your ITG hard drive is, most of them are 40, I believe, by default. So you have to look here and be like, okay. Uh, it's kind of blurry, but there are two hard drives listed here. If you are running live Linux CD on a laptop, your your flash drive is going to show up, your laptop's hard drive is going to show up, and the in the groove hard drive is going to show up. The in the groove hard drive is the one that is the size you know it is. So this is 30, it says 37.27, it's a bit blurry, but that's the one that we want. And um, if we wait for this to focus here, We'll focus in a second. Come on, camera, you can do it. There we go. Okay, so now you can see stuff. <laughs> so um, you're going to have a couple of smaller partitions. You're going to have S SDB, and um, the, the second letter of SDB is going to be variable. So it might, might show up as SBB. It might show up as SCB on your computer. Don't worry about that. Um, that doesn't matter. All you need to know is that um, the numbers match up with um, what we're seeing on the screen. So, as you can see, I have this really big um, area called SDB5. That is my already expanded ITG partition. And the black stuff is an unallocated space. So, um, when you first open up this application and you have not ever 
expanded your drive, the gray area, the unallocated area, is going to be very large. So, um, your extended partition and your XFS, so your, your partition labeled as 4 and your partition labeled as 5, those are the part that combination is what actually contains your data. Your, um, basically, this is some interesting kind of file system that for some reason ITG creators, like, they did it that way. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I have no clue. But um, you basically have to expand S the, the fourth partition first to the desired size, and then you need to expand SDB5 to the desired size. So in order to do this, um, I'm going to expand my 30.72 gigabyte custom partition by one gig. So um, the, the way to do this the way that I'm doing this is going to be the same way that you need to expand your nine gigabyte custom partition into um, the size I currently have, 31, 32, whatever. Um, sorry for all my ums. <laughs> I don't usually make long videos, so. Um, so yeah, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna click on our extended partition. This is your fourth partition. Oh my God, focus. What's wrong with you? Okay, so we're focused now. I need a tripod, but anyway, you're going to right click on this partition and you're going to say, actually you can't right click yet, Never mind. First, you need to unmount this. You need to unmount this drive because right now um, it's accessible to the computer and you're allowed to modify files and stuff, but if you're going to do stuff to it in this Gparted program, then you need to put it in, put the hard drive in a special state. So we're gonna go to device, or no, partition. No, 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 device. Aha, okay, so what, what we need to do is you need to Okay, focus. So we need to right click on as the fifth partition we have and go to the drop down menu and click on unmount. This will allow us to actually edit the partition without damaging or you know messing up any other files on the system. So once we unmount this partition, um, we're going to be able to tell the system how to modify its size. So, um, so we right clicked and we unmounted it. And now we're going to be able to um, go to SDB4, right click, and click on the resize slash move. Please focus. Please focus. Focus. No, please. Okay. All right, we focused. Okay, so once that's unmounted, you right click on extended and you click on resize slash move. So you have a little bit of space left, minimum size, maximum size. So I know there is not, so technically I could make this smaller if I wanted to, since I'm not using all the space on it. Well, actually, I don't know. That might break something. Don't listen to that. So now we have this menu and we can expand the size of the custom content partition on the in the groove hard drive. So um, this is a really nice interface so we don't even have to touch the numbers. All we, we have to do is um, hover our mouse over the right edge of this thing and increase it to the to the desired size. So if if we are if I had a unaltered partition, um th the size would be all the way all the way like here where my mouse is hovering right now. Like all the way on the left side and you'd be able to expand it all the way out here. 
which is what you're going to do. I just have already expanded it most of the way so that I could, you know, start using custom songs, but not all the way so that, because you want to leave a little bit of room just because to be safe. You don't need to fill your whole hard drive with songs and stuff anyway. If you do, you can just upgrade your disk. But always leave a little bit of room because otherwise your file system will try and use that space and it it, it just keeps your load times um, lower if you don't, you know, use up all the space on your hard drive. So I would just keep it um, a little less than all the way. So I'm going to adjust it to a little more just so that you can see um, what progress the application what progress, how the, how the application shows progress as it's um, completing the operation. So you click on resize slash move and then um, this dialog pops up and tells you that um, grow dev slash your fourth partition from 30 point whatever to whatever. So it's telling you this is what I'm going to do. Alright, so you're going to allow that to happen. And see right now that's only your um, your extended outside partition. You have to go back after this operation is completed and go to your fifth partition and expand that because you are technically creating um, the SDB4 partition is just um, a wrapper for SDB5 or in your case S whatever B5. It's going to be the fifth one though. So um, you're going to apply that so we press the enter button. This is the enter button where my mouse is hovering. Are you sure you want to apply the changes? Yes, apply. Don't touch your hard drive. This is the progress bar that's going to occur. Um, it's going to look something like this. Um, and if it completes successfully, which it really should, otherwise something's wrong with your hard drive, then it will display this message. And then you click close. And then it will refresh for you. And then you do the same thing with your SDB5. You right click, or actually, well, let's see. Okay, so um, there is another step you have to take in later distributions of Linux when you plug the in the groove hard drive into a computer to modify the partition size. So you're going to get a message like this and I'll explain what this means. Warning unable to read the contents of the file system because because of this some operations may be unavailable. This cause might be a the cause might be a missing software package. The following list of software packages is a required for XFS file system support. XFS progs, XFS dump. So it's telling us we are missing software packages. And so we have to go get the software packages and we have our terminal up already, so we can just go ahead and do that. So actually this terminal is in use, so let's just open up another one. Just open another terminal. And we have to do sudo apt-get install for these packages. And then we'll be able to modify the partition of the XFS partition on the ITG hard drive. So yeah. Um, also, I apologize for explaining things in too much detail. I know I probably am. You guys probably aren't interested in this stuff, but whatever. You can skip through this video if this is too annoying, or I can make it a condensed version. So whatever. All right. So um, here we go. Um, sudo apt-get install we wanted to install XFS progs and F XFS dump I believe XFS progs F uh, XFS dump okay so we need to do XFS XFS prog was it prog or progs Correct. Progs, okay, progs. If you if you make a typo, it's okay. You can just do it again, and it will be fine. Okay, password. Okay, and then it's doing it.
And then we need to get XFS dump. So um, you can just hit the up arrow while you're in your terminal. Hit the up arrow, you'll get the command back. sudo apt get install at XFS dump. Enter. And since you already entered your password for uh, super user, you don't have to do it again. It will just automatically reuse your credentials. And yeah, there you go, they're installed. So um, I think we need to restart Gparted now. So you can close it. Um, maybe you can refresh Gparted, refresh devices. This might get rid of the problem that the software is having, I feel like. If it can access the new software we just installed. Um, let's see. So yeah, unfortunately we have to restart the program, which is fine. Just close it. Your hard drive's fine, nothing's wrong with it. Um, and just type gparted again in terminal. Oh, we need to do sudo gparted, my bad. And when it's loading up again, you're gonna have to unmount the partition again. All right, so I have to go back to our in the groove hard drive. And, um, see now you don't have a warning symbol next to your F XFS. So awesome, now we can extend the XFS. We can resize and move and just take up, go ahead and use up all that space. For me, um, as you can see here, this is showing how much space on the disk is used and how much is not used. So if I wanted to, I can shrink it. Well, actually I can't, but there's a way you can do that. I'm not gonna go over it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so as you can see, I have this much space, new space that I allocated from the fourth partition, the wrapper partition, and I just fill it up all the way. And then I apply my changes and then it's added to the queue of what changes need to be written to the partition table and then you press enter. Are you sure you want to apply the pending operations apply? Yes. And then it grows the partition. Now we just wait. Might take a little bit because you are changing really critical data. Don't drop the hard drive, don't touch your hard drive, don't unplug it, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, stuff won't work. And yeah, now we're done. So, um, with everything worked out right, I'm gonna close this dialog. And you can see that my hard drive space, or my SDB5 partition image at the top is no longer 30.72, but it's now 31.86. And you should see similar changes um, when you grew from 9 gigs to 30, or 31, or whatever, however much space you want it to take up. So yeah, there you go, there you have it, that's how you do it. Um, you want to un, you want to safely shut down your computer and unplug the hard drive, and then you can I mean, right now you can go ahead and copy more songs to it. I bet you want to do that. Um, that's totally cool. Go for it. Um, or you can just go ahead and unplug it and stick it back in your machine. So um, I'm going to do another important tutorial, which is how to save an image of your drive on your computer. Because um, if your hard drive does crash and, you know, you have all these custom songs on it already, it's already all, you know, it's already hacked. You don't want to go through the process again um, in case this whole thing messes up. I'll also, I'll also make a video tutorial on how to back up your ITG hard drive, which is the same as backing up any other external hard drive. All you have to do is use um, DD, this software called DD, to make a disk drive image, essentially. Um, 
Actually, I'll probably just point you guys to a tutorial online that will show you how to do that because it's really simple. You just have to use Linux commands and it's pretty simple. Use a terminal and you just make the image and you have this giant file that's an image of your hard drive. And then there are tutorials on how to put that image back on a hard drive, which is super simple and easy to figure out. I do recommend that you do that before trying this expanding thing because you never know what might go wrong. You never know if you might unplug your hard drive. Um, you might be a new Linux user and accidentally mess something up. Who knows? But it's always better to be safe than to be sorry. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, I hope you learned a lot. Probably didn't, but that's okay. See you later. Bye.